What are the three essential jazz guitar practice elements and how can they help you in your jazz guitar journey? In today's video class we're going to be talking about what each one of these are and how they can take your playing to the next level. But before we begin, I'd just like to say two things. The first is that this video lesson coincides with a brand new ebook which I've just released called Beginner Jazz Guitar Guide. Now the good news is the, this ebook is completely free. It's 62 printable pages and it goes very well with all the things that we're going to be talking about in today's class. It has jazz lines, it has jazz transcription tips, it has jazz repertoire, jazz chords. It's a really locked and loaded guide to help you get started in your jazz guitar journey. So if you'd like to get a free copy of that, then please just put your email address in the, in the link which is provided below this video. So yeah, just a link below this video, click that, put your email address in and I'll send it to you. And that's gonna help this video make a whole lot more sense and it's free as well. So what's not to like about that? Okay, that's the first thing. And the second thing is that, you know, any type of jazz guitar study that you do and jazz in general is really a big commitment. Unfortunately, it's not something that you can just really study for a couple of weeks and have amazing results. It really does take, you know, month in, month out, year in, year out. It takes a lot of study um, to make progress with jazz. You know, you're not really going to feel like you're even beginning to get good at jazz until you've got six or seven tunes that you can play from memory, you know, a bit of scales and how they're applied. You've maybe transcribed a couple of solos. It is a big commitment, so uh, please bear that in mind if you are serious about learning jazz, okay? All right, so let's begin with the three essential practice elements. Okay, so the first one of these three essential practice elements is technique. Okay, what is technique? What do I mean by that? So by technique, what I really mean are things like chords, scales, but it can refer to anything. It can refer to like right hand technique, left hand technique. This is the first element of my three on the list. So why is it important to have good technique on the guitar? Well, as some of you will probably already know, jazz can become quite a technical music really. If you listen to Charlie Parker, uh, bebop themes and you know, giant steps by John Coltrane to name an extreme example. Um, you know, these are some of the highest examples of technique in jazz. So if you don't know things like a major scale and you can't play a major scale at 160 beats or whatever with alternate picking, that's left hand technique and right hand technique, then you know, you're going to be finding some of the material quite tough. So the first element technique really means things like chords, scales, general guitar technique. It is very, very important to know and it should be a big part um, of your practice routine, at least for a while. You know, there will come a point, you know, maybe after a couple of years where you know a lot of chords, a lot of scales, and then, you know, you can kind of relax a little bit on that. But getting that technique to the level that you need is very, very important. So um, that is the first thing. And like I said, chords is a big part of that. And in the jazz guitar guide, the beginner jazz guitar guide, I have some really easy chords to get you started with jazz guitar. They're just free note chord voicings and you can play thousands of different jazz standards using these. So please go ahead and get that guide if you haven't got it. And that's got the chord diagrams for those free note chords which are gonna help you get started. So that's the first element, technique. The second essential element of a jazz guitar practice routine is repertoire, okay? The standards and tunes which you know. So why, does import, why is it important to know tunes? Well, if I give you two examples, if you think of maybe one musician and the first musician, say he knows hundreds of scales, but he doesn't know any standards or tunes from the top of his head whatsoever. And the second musician, he knows loads of standards and he knows a little bit about scales and, you know, but it's very limited, you know, but he knows a lot of tunes from memory and he can improvise over these tunes as well. Which of those two do you think is going to be the better of the two musicians? Well, probably most of you would agree that the second one is going to be the strongest musician out of those because knowing tunes, it's a really good way to guide your progress through jazz. And it's part of learning the jazz tradition, really. You know, every serious jazz musician will know tunes like Autumn Leaves, Blue Bossa, Stella by Starlight, all the things you are, 
These are really good tunes that you should know and they're going to be vital to your progress as a musician really. So what do I mean when I say, you know, no tunes? Well, I mean that you should know the lyrics to the songs that have lyrics. You should have the chords from memory. You should have the melody from memory. You should feel confident at improvising over each one of these tunes. So most of my students, they tend to spend about a month, give or take, on tunes so that they know them to that level. Obviously, you know, to really know a tune, you've got to play it live and, you know, really play it in and out and be able to, you know, play it having not played it for a while. So it's literally like writing your name. That's the level that you really want to be able to get to knowing a tune. But initially, you know, I think you could spend a month on one tune and have it so you feel fairly confident, you know, at that. So within a year, you could have a fairly good list of tunes under your belt and then you can begin to feel like you know what you're beginning to know. Um, and and get confident with jazz guitar. So that is the second thing. The repertoire is the second element. In your practice routine, you should always be learning the standard, or at least you know every. You know you shouldn't really be going say eight months without le learning a, a brand new standard. It's a really important part um, of learning jazz. So first thing that we talked about was technique, knowing your chords, knowing your scales. The second thing was knowing your repertoire, making sure that you can play chords and melodies from memory. What is the third thing? The last thing is transcription. Okay, transcription, that just means listening to a record and working out what is being played. That's a very kind of, you know, basic overview of what transcription is. Really, what I mean is the entire process of transcription because without transcribing, you're only really going to go so far. Okay, obviously I've got another video about this which describes how you know strongly I feel about transcription but at the same time if you want to sound like the guys that you really like to listen to if you want to sound like Wes or Joe Bass or Charlie Parker you know unfortunately if you just sat around learning a bunch of standards and you know working on your technique and working at your scales you're not just going to get a pat on the back and all of a sudden you're going to sound like Charlie Parker that doesn't happen unfortunately um, what more realistically does happen is that you transcribe them solos, you learn them, you get his lines and his language into your playing and that's, you know, that journey and that process of how that happens. It's not a magical thing that suddenly happens out of nowhere. So, you know, I recommend that you transcribe as much as you can, really. So, obviously you don't want to start with, you know, some of the more technically fierce jazz musicians, certainly transcribing Charlie Parker and John Coltrane, those guys can be a bit much and it can cause you to get discouraged because it can be quite technically difficult to transcribe. But starting with guys like Hank Mobley, Grant Green, Chet Baker, Miles Davis, Stan Getz, melodic strong players, these are great to start transcribing. You know, when you transcribe these guys, you want to work out with the plane, you could even just steal a couple of the licks, you could um, learn an entire solo, but you want to be writing down these things, integrating them into your plane, that's what's going to give you progress over time, as well as, you know, doing the other things that I've talked about, the technique and the tunes as well. So, really, I guess I could recap um, these three elements with three T's, uh, so you could think of them as being technique, tunes and transcription, those three T's if you stick with those over time, you are going to see um, development in your jazz guitar practice. So those are what they are, they are what I believe in. So what are your thoughts on each of those things? Please share them in the comment section below. What do you think? Is there anything that I missed? Hopefully most of the things which construct a jazz practice routine will fall under those three elements, um, really. You know, technique covers a wide range of things, tunes covers a, a huge jazz tradition, and transcription, well, you know, just from what I've been talking about, that could go anywhere from, you know, a very simple melodic solo to something much more complex. So these are things you want to bear in mind as you progress on your journey throughout jazz guitar. So if you did enjoy this video and you found it useful, please click the like button below. That would really help support this channel. If you could subscribe as well, I'd really appreciate that. And like I said at the beginning, I have a free beginner jazz guitar ebook, 62 pages for you to dive into and find out more about each of these techniques. So I'd really appreciate it if you could uh, sign up to my email news list and check that out as well. So thanks very much anyway for checking this video out and I look forward to seeing you all in the next class. Cheers.